the most amazing food wrap ever developed. Limited only by the imagination of the minds of men. Over just a few decades, it found its way into every part of our home. And as the production of plastics boomed... The age of plastics can certainly be described as right now. Its low cost and promise of convenience meant we could treat it more and more expendably. Being disposable, there are no empties to collect. Saran Wrap is a product of the Dow Chemical Company. What's often called virgin plastic is made from oil and gas by a handful of large petrochemical companies. Now that we're aware of the issue of plastic pollution, it seems reasonable to expect we might be slowing down the rate that we're producing the stuff. So what are the plastic industry's plans for the future? I've just been sent a graph which shows they're not planning to slow down any time soon. I mean, the graph is going like that. A leading environmental scientist at the University of California has pulled together the global data on plastic production and it reveals that the rate of increase is ramping up. From the beginning of this century to now, plastic production has doubled from 200 million tonnes per year to passing 400 million tonnes and it's accelerating so that it's due to double again, passing the 800 million tonnes a year mark by about 2040. The graph was sent to me by the president of the Centre for International Environmental Law, Carol Muffet. So the plastics industry has plans for massive expansion. What is driving that? In a word, the fracking boom. Fracking for shale gas has made natural gas really, really cheap. And as a result, it's made the plastics feedstocks really, really cheap. And that is driving a massive expansion in the infrastructure to make new plastics. So fracking for shale gas is making plastics cheaper. Over the next few years, we will see more than $200 billion in new investments for plastics and petrochemicals. Wow, this is a lot to take on board. I just had no idea what the scale of this issue is. It was nice talking with you. If shale gas is behind a new plastics boom in the US, what's happening here in the UK? Carol suggests I look up a company called INEOS. INEOS, the word for chemicals. Jim Radcliffe, a profile by this... Jim Radcliffe, I've heard of Jim Radcliffe. Jim Radcliffe owns INEOS. Jim Radcliffe is Britain's richest man. Many of the things you use during the day that are made using chemicals We've had a hand in, he says with a smile. Plastics, Ratcliffe. OK, here we go. Dear Sir Jim. 20% of Ineos's plastic business is making plastic packaging. And just one of their facilities is responsible for a third of the 1.8 million tonnes of plastic produced in the UK every year. So I'm delighted when they say they're happy for me to visit that site at Grangemouth in Scotland. I know from experience that when you get invited in by a big company like this, there's always a story they want to tell. I'm expecting it to be pretty slick, a big shiny plastic future for us all to be proud of. But I've also got some questions about that future. And tomorrow I'm allowed in to see it all close up for myself. Bright and early, I meet one of INEOS's directors, Tom Crotty. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome well, to Grangemouth. Well. Thank you very much. And I can't help but notice an impressive model ship. These INEOS boats. This is a scale model of one of our 12 Dragon ships, made in China, all designed to bring gas from the United States into Europe. Right to the site here? Yes, absolutely to the site. They come all the way up the Firth of Forth. There isn't one in today, but... Uh, this is a video of uh, when we actually had the first one coming in. There's the tug in front of it. Here it comes under the iconic fourth bridge. These are coming in all the time. Uh, it's, it's a virtual pipeline, uh, constantly flowing uh, gas from America. Extraordinary. So cheap American shale gas is already flowing directly to our shores. INEOS have spent a billion dollars on these ships to bring in the very resource that's supercharging plastics production in the States.
as Tom takes me into the facility, he explains that INEOS have spent another half a billion dollars on upgrading it to receive the imported gas. This includes building Europe's largest ethane tank, where the gas is stored before being fed to the heart of the process. This is the, the cracker. We take the ethane gas, heat it up to about 1,000 degrees, and that cracks it into smaller molecules. And those molecules can then be compressed and cooled down into primarily ethylene. And this block beyond, is that another cracker? When we didn't have enough gas, when we were just relying on the North Sea, train two was closed down, mothballed, and we just ran this one. Since we've had the ethane coming in from America, we can now run both. You've doubled your production Correct. by being able to switch on this second yeah. train. We are actually in the process of adding more furnace capacity. So there is room for some more growth in there this operation. There is still room. What are your power requirements to keep this plant running? Well, to keep the whole site running, we'd be using the same sort of power as, say, three major Scottish cities, Edinburgh, Glasgow and Aberdeen. Combined? It's combined, yeah. That's the amount of electricity being used correct. here? Yes, that's correct. And that's correct. before you even get to the gas that's correct. creating that's right. the thousand degrees to do the cracking? That's absolutely right. 99% of all plastic is made from oil and gas, but making it also burns vast amounts of fossil fuels. If plastics production continues to grow as predicted, by 2050, it'll be responsible for 15% of global carbon emissions. So, this is the end of the process, effectively, you. The ethylene has now been formed into long chains of molecules, becoming the solid polymer we call plastic. This is uh, still, still quite warm. So this is polyethylene. That is polyethylene. The most commonly used plastic in the world. It's quite mesmerising just watching these bags fill up so quickly. I think you're filling one every three seconds. That sounds about right. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Every three seconds, you're bagging up 25 kilos of plastic. On this bagging unit, there's another one behind us. In total, the plant produces a mind-boggling 60 to 70 billion plastic pellets every day. We're in a world where people everywhere are just becoming aware of the problems yeah. being caused by plastics. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever wonder when you hear the latest story of some obscure fish that's been pulled out of the deepest trench in the ocean and has been found to have uh, tiny microplastics in its gut, yeah. do you ever think to yourself, I wonder if those plastics came from Grangemouth, from Ineos? I, we wonder about those issues all the time. The fundamental for me is why do we end up with plastics in the ocean, which is not what they, where they should be. I mean, plastics per se are not the problem. Waste plastic and littering is the problem. We have to address that you are the by source. proper recycling. You are the source. Yep. It's not enough. When the bath is overflowing and the water is flooding and sure. damaging the building, sure. it's not enough just to be mopping up. We have to turn off the tap. You are the tap. INEOS is one of the big plastic taps on the planet. Shouldn't we be reducing production, looking at other innovations that don't involve the spread of plastics across the planet? We, we, we're looking at all of those things. There's no point in turning the tap off because you stop the good with the bad. I'll give you a very good example. Polyethylene going into water pipes. Water pipes have transformed water management around the world. Aeroplanes are becoming increasingly plastic. That's helping with fuel economy. So those are the sorts of applications that we're developing new polymers for. Not plastic bags and plastic straws. That's no interest to us at all. But you do do plastic packaging. It's 20% of your business. 20% of our business overall is plastic packaging. You've, all, you've got a company called Styrolutions. Yep who make some of the products that are known to cause real problems in the waste chain, like these uh, shrink wrap plastics that go around water bottles, uh, cosmetics bottles, this kind of flexible film packaging. These are the known miscreants of the plastic world, and you're not only supplying plastics for these products, you're manufacturing the products. Shouldn't you be backing off that kind of product and using your extraordinary resources and wealth to create solutions to these problems? 100% of every piece of polymer we produce is recyclable when it leaves us. What we're trying to do is work with packaging designers, work with con consumer products companies to improve the recyclability. The other area we're doing a huge amount of work on is to say, can we take back all of that plastic or most of that plastic and put it back through our chemical systems, break it right back down to constituent parts, 
and make plastic again. We don't care whether we make plastic from gas or we make plastic from old plastic. If we can solve chemical recycling, we can close that loop completely. How close are you to solving chemical recycling? I'd say recycling? we're two or three years away from that. The mantra about closing the loop with chemical recycling of our used plastics is well rehearsed. But everything I've seen here, especially the virtual pipeline of US shale gas that they're so proud of, suggests they're not planning to stop making virgin plastic anytime soon. One thing that's definitely going to stay with me today, what I saw. Billions and billions and billions of tiny pellets of plastic leaving this factory today, tomorrow, every single day. Where are they going to end up? Seriously. What is certain is that the more plastic this industry produces, the more plastic will end up in our lives, whether we want it or not. Campaigning sisters Ella and Caitlin have been busy spreading the word about their